Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Apubo Rama, and in today's video, I'll be telling you all the things you're doing wrong when it comes to money grinding in Grand Theft Auto Online, how to save money, how to save time, and obviously make the big bucks. So let's get straight into it. First things first, let's break into the worst of businesses in the game for making money. These are not opinions on what I'll be sharing here. These aren't, I don't like these businesses. I'm just gonna be showcasing the businesses that are a waste of time because they have the least amount of money made per hour or however long you're spending on them. Yes, you can personally like the business and if you wanna grind them, that is fully up to you. I'm not here to say you can't, but in terms of money making, if you wanna make more and save time, don't do the businesses I'm about to list. Starting off, we have The Hangar. The Hangar is a terrible business. Yes, it's really good if you want to store planes there, and I would highly recommend to purchase a Hangar if you want to store your Raiju and your Rogue and all those goodies. But in terms of making money, The Hangar is terrible. The cooldowns make it very long on sourcing each crate. Even if you were sourcing crates at five minutes a pop, you would still only be making about $600,000 an hour, which is less money than you're going to be making sourcing special cargo crates. The hangar looks really good on the payout because it's like a 2.7 million dollar payout. Yes, it looks amazing, but it takes like 30, 40 hours to fill it from start to finish. It's not worth the time. Don't waste your money or your effort on the hangar. Just go somewhere else. Another business, or should I say cluster of businesses that is terrible, is anything involving the motorcycle club. There are still people that do motorcycle club sale missions, which is really surprising to me because there are so many YouTube videos out there from me, from Tylerius to TGG, talking about why motorcycle club businesses suck. And it's pretty simple why. A, when you register as a motorcycle club president, there is a chance of being raided every single time. Sometimes you'll get ghost raids, you won't even know you're being raided, and then you'll just get a call from LJT, hey, you got raided and lost all of your product, ha ha. Or other times, you won't be able to do a mission that you want to do because you have to go stop a raid. I would say if you have, let's say, four motorcycle club businesses running at a current time, and you are registered as a motorcycle club president to call out your oppressor mark too faster, there is at least a 50% chance you will get raided within one to two hours. It's really bad. So I personally hate the motorcycle club businesses for that reason alone, but it gets even worse because the payouts themselves are not very good. You have to pay $75,000 each resupply. And when you're doing the sale missions, if you get the trash master post-op van, the helicopters, or any of the planes, it's going to take you at least 20 to 25 minutes to complete them. In 20 to 25 minutes, you can easily make four to $500,000 an hour doing other properties, which means you're just losing money at that point. I would highly recommend the stay away from motorcycle club businesses. They're not even fun. Like, I, the sale missions are painful. The business themselves are painful due to the raids. I, I can at least see some arguments for the hangar because you don't have to worry about raids or anything like that. Nah. Motorcycle club businesses are the worst. The only one that I can say is remotely good is the Coke lockup because it actually has decent payouts. But even then, it's bad. If you have two people, three people to help you with the sale missions, it's all right. But at that point, just use those two, three people to do the Diamond Casino heist and the Cayoprico heist. You'll probably have more fun than selling post op vans and you'll actually be able to make more money. So at the end of the day, motorcycle club businesses suck. That is the end. Another business I would not recommend to buy is the Chop Shop. This is the newest business added into the game. It looks really cool, but it's ridiculously expensive at $2.7 million for the La Puerta property. The one I bought was like $2.6 million. And you only get three missions a week. Yes, they pay decent, about $400,000 to $300,000, but they take you about 40 minutes to complete from start to finish. That's terrible money. Like, it's actually terrible. So I would always recommend the stay away from the Chop Shop. Now, if you like the business because of the fact that it has a passive income and the fact that it's a new property, sure, you can pick it up. But if you're trying to make money, this is not a good business by any means whatsoever. I think that's basically all of them, but we have one more to talk about, and that is this, the facility. I would not recommend to buy the facility. I wouldn't even recommend to buy it. Like, there's a couple cool vehicles you can get with it, like the Kanjali, but now that you can own an Avenger inside of your hangar, there is literally no reason to actually get the facility, because the Avenger is the major good vehicle out of it. This property costs a crap ton of money, and the heists themselves, they're all right, but you need two people to complete them, and the heists take a very long time. They just aren't worth it. When 
when you compare it to other newer, better properties. So yeah, unfortunately, out of all the properties I've listed, I can definitely say those are the worst on this website. If we make our way over to Dynasty 8 Executive, there's really only one type of business that I can say isn't great. I would still recommend to own the office building, but in terms of making money, the office building really isn't that good. It's all right. You'll make about $700,000 an hour if you are doing special cargo at the max efficiency, but even then, that's really not that much. You can also make $700,000 an hour doing a vehicle cargo paired with payphone hits. So yeah, overall, those are the best and worst businesses. Well, not the best. The best are just the ones that I didn't list, but the worst do not partake in those businesses. If you want to make the most money, if you think they're fun, then I don't have any problem with that. That's all, all up to you. But in terms of making money, I would highly recommend to only focus on the other businesses like the bunker, the nightclub, the agency, obviously things like that, the Kosatka, other than doing things like motorcycle club and the hangar. The second way to save a lot of money is buying what is only necessary. There's a pretty easy way to showcase this. If we make our way over to Maze Bank foreclosures, and let's say I want to purchase a nightclub. How about the Vespucci Canal nightclub? It's 1.3 million buckaroonies. However, let's say I want to put on some cool lighting. Let's make it pink on the inside, and then we can put a light rig on, then we can change the name to Galaxy, and then we can do a dancer and some dry ice. We have just changed the price tag from 1.3 million to 2.3 million. And none of these cosmetics do anything for the actual profit of the business. This is just setting back my losses. So instead of having to earn $1.3 million before I break even with this business, now I have to make 2.3 million to break even. This is a complete waste of money. Yes, there are people that will type in the comments, well, you just don't like cosmetics, you suck. Sure, I don't really care too much about the cosmetics and I will put them in later, but I don't really think it's mandatory, especially if you're trying to make money starting off as a new player, to waste your money on cosmetics like this when all you're trying to do is make money. The only real important thing when it comes to the nightclub is storage. I don't even know if you need to worry about the garage right now, but the storage floors, very, very important as that will obviously make you a lot of money. This is the case for honestly the majority of businesses. If you make your way back over to Maze Bank Foreclosure and let's say you wanna purchase, I don't know, a facility. How about this facility right here? It's normally 3 million, but then you put on the facility graphics and that's 145,000. Then the orbital cannon, which is useless. You're never even gonna use it. And then the security room, you're never gonna use that either. And then the lounge, which I forgot I even had inside of my building. And then the sleeping quarters. You buy all this stuff, it goes from 3 million to 5.165 million. That is 2 million extra on cosmetics and things you're not going to use or need. It's the same thing for the Kosatka. The missile upgrade in the Kosatka, I don't even know if I own it on my personal vehicle because I don't really ever see the use for the missiles. Like, do you actually ever sit in your Kosatka and just launch missiles at people? If you do, first of all, you're really lame. But the majority of you probably don't. And because of that it was a, just a waste of whatever one point you know million dollars to purchase it and that's just kind of how i see the majority of cosmetics in this game if you're not actually using them and you don't notice them then there's no point to purchase them so don't it's very simple the amount of money you spend on your business is how much you have to break even. So focus on the upgrades, focus on the things that'll make you money. Once you have, you know, a lot of money like me, if you've got $90 million, then sure, waste whatever money you want on the cosmetics. But if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you're watching this video to make money, don't waste it. Now let's break into some tips and tricks that will help you save a lot of money when resupplying your businesses and add some quick cash into your bank account. Starting off, we have excess weapons parts and exotic mixed goods. If you go into your bunker, you will see the dune loader sitting right in front of it. Doesn't matter if you have any upgrades in your bunker or not, but if you walk into it, you will see this vehicle. All you need to do is walk up to it and it'll ask you if you want to do a quick sale mission. All you need to do is drive two to three miles, depending on where your bunker location is, and you're done. As you can see, See, I just did my delivery right here. It took me about a minute and a half because it was a two mile destination. And just like that, I banked $50,000 into my bank account. This is really nice for two reasons. First of all, it's $50,000. But if you plan on resupplying your business like the bunker or your acid lab, anything like that, the $50,000 that you get for that super quick sale mission basically makes it free, which is actually really, really nice. You can also do this exact same thing if you walk to the front office inside of your CEO building. This second tip is a fairly well-known one for a lot of grinders, but if you didn't know it, it's always really, really nice to learn. For example, 
If we do a sale mission, let's say to Los Santos for $567,000, and let's say it's a really, really bad sale mission, or let's say while I'm doing one of these vehicles deliveries, somebody's trying to blow me up because I'm trying to get that high demand bonus. I'm in a public lobby. And yeah, somebody's trying to blow me up, so I'm really, really worried. Well, no problem. As you saw, it's $567,000. But if we go to online and we find a new session invite only, we're going to load back into our bunker because I set my spawn location to the bunker. And what's going to happen is literally nothing. We're going to lose maybe about $15,000 worth of product and we can do the sale mission again. So if you ever get a sale mission that you don't have enough time to complete or you are in a lobby where you're like, crap, I am about to blow up to an oppressor mark too, just go to a new lobby. You're barely going to lose any of the money. Let's see. So if we go to sell stock, yeah, I went from 567 to 535. So you lost about 20, $30,000. It's not really that big of a deal. And it's a lot better than losing out on maybe a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 if you can't finish a vehicle within time of the sale mission, or even worse, if somebody blows up all of your product. This next tip is quite an easy one, and most of you probably already know this, but on the off chance that some of you don't, it's very simple. Go over to your phone, scroll over to Mutt, and once you call him, you will be able to resupply your acid lab. So as you can see, I can spend $60,000 and boom, Mutt will now get the supplies to my acid lab and I will never ever have to actually step foot in the business unless I want to do the sale mission, making it way, way easier to complete. And now we finally arrive to, in my opinion, the most important advice of all, and the one that will actually make you way more money than anything else here, and that is swapping characters. If we pull off to the side of the road here and we take a look at the properties I own, I obviously have an agency and also I have a Kosatka, which is stored away somewhere underwater. Now, doing the Kayaprico heist or the agency Dr. Dre VIP missions will have about a two hour plus cooldown before you can start them up again. And for a lot of people, that two hour cooldown is obviously really, really long. However, there's a way to completely circumvent and ignore that cooldown, and it's very easy. All you need to do is go to online, and once you see swap character, you can literally swap to your other character. If you haven't made one, I think it's like $100,000, it's super easy. So you're gonna go to this little screen here with the lineup, and all you need to do is go to your secondary character. Once you swap to your secondary character, all of the money that you have on your main account is stored with your secondary character's bank account. What that means is you can literally earn money on this character, put it in your bank account, and it will go to your main character. So you can purchase with money from your main character, a Kosatka and an agency on your alt, and then you can do the Kyoprico heist on your main account, and then swap to your alt character and do the heist again. Store the money in your bank and it'll go to your main character. Then you can do the agency, rinse and repeat. You can start to understand why this is absolutely massive. And uh, yeah, it will it will basically make you millions and millions of dollars. It is currently the fastest way to making money in GTA Online. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. This obviously takes a lot of time and effort to get these videos out to you. But as always, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.